All right, good morning. Uh, today I will tell you about the clinical biochemistry of cardiovascular diseases. Uh, you already were on our first lessons, maybe uh, some, some, of, some of you missed some classes, one or two, or maybe three classes. So I want to give you information, the whole information about clinical biochemistry of cardiovascular diseases. Um, uh, this is the plan of the lecture. At first, at first point, I will tell about the plasma, plasma lipid transport. Because lipids are hydrophobic molecules, they can interact with water, and so we have to produce specific transport proteins, specific uh, transport um, uh, structures which can carry lipids from one organ to another organ. Um, the second part of the lecture will be devoted to um, markers of acute myocardial infarction. Uh, I'll tell you about the markers, different markers, old markers, and uh, modern markers, which we can use right now in most hospitals in, in the world. They are troponins, creatinine kinase, um, transaminases, like hydrogenases, and others. And the last part of the lecture, on the, I'll give you information about markers of cardiovascular risk and how, how heart failure. These are C-reactive protein, homocysteine, natriuretic peptides. So, now, uh, plasma lipid transport. So, uh, here you can see a structure, general structure of uh, lipoproteins. Uh, they have three main components. The first component, what uh, uh, water we have to transport from one organ to another organ. We call this structure hydrophobic core. You can see in the center of this circle. Um, because um, hydrophobic chemicals can interact with water, we have to produce a specific, specific structure, phospholipid monolayer. Here you can see um, bluish structure which surrounds uh, hydrophobic core. Come on, come on, come on. Hiya, stop. Okay, let's close the door. Okay, let's close the door. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, this uh, mono, mono layer structure contains two parts. Look at the left left picture. Uh, blue shown as a head, hydro, hydrophilic head, which can interact with water. And uh, there are two hydrophobic tails, which can interact with hydrophobic core. So these molecules we call amphiphilic. So that means that they both can interact with hydrophobic molecules of uh, core and uh, hydrophilic molecules or ions, which surround so these structures. The, the, the last, the third component of lipoproteins are apolipoproteins, apoprotein. Apo means on the surface. So these surface proteins have two main functions. The first function is, is related with the uh, supporting of structure of lipoproteins. So they can, um, uh, they make more rigid the structure. Because we have high temperature, to the Celsius degree, and in this in, the, in this situation, uh, in this uh, case, the the rate of the movement of molecules is very high, and in in in, in circumstance of our organism in our bloodstream, this structure could be destroyed. To support the three-dimensional structure, we produce specific structural proteins, apoproteins. That's the first function of apoproteins. The second function. <laughs> I'm very glad to see you. Please close the door. Hey. Uh -huh. Is he your sl slave? Huh? Yes? Okay. All right. So uh, the, second, the second function is uh, informational function. That means that uh, apple lipoproteins can give information to our cells, and our cells can choose like uh, when you go to a supermarket, you can choose any, any types of uh, food. You can find them according to their surface on, on, the, 
on the uh, or um, maybe information which are written on the surface of this of this pack with with the food. You can choose. So uh, our last stream works. Our organism works like a supermarket, and uh, we produce a lot of different components, a lot of different <coughs> chemicals and structures like lipoproteins. And cells which can interact with water, with the blood, can choose appropriate component which, uh, which, which they need. So if, if a cell needs glucose, uh, uh, this cell expresses a transport protein, specific transport protein to interact with glucose and transfer glucose into the cell. Or if the cells need a cholesterol, in case of uh, production new mm, membranes, in case of growth of this cell, or if this cell should produce specific steroid hormones, these cells should to take from bloodstream cholesterol. So they have to express specific protein which can interact with cholesterol. So apolipoproteins can give information to our cells what type, which type of chemicals they carry. So one type of um, lipoproteins carry uh, can give information about this, their number of molecules of cholesterol inside of these structures. Some of them can give information to cells that they carry triacylglycerols to give energy to our cells. So this is a general structure of apple lipopro uh, lipoproteins in general. Right, uh, we have, uh, we know uh, several types of um, lipoproteins. Here, the list of these lipoproteins is hemicrons, very low dense lipoproteins, low dense lipoproteins, and high dense lipoproteins. Uh, we distinguish them according to their density. The first, uh, the first uh, method of distinguishing this uh, hemicrons was a centrifuge, uh, centrifuge, uh, centrifuge, <laughs> Centrifugation, yeah. So, uh, according, according to this... Let's, let's, let, let's tell him hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, we are waiting you. Very long time. Right? Um, okay, uh, so according to the, to the density... Uh, according to the density... We can distinguish them according to their density in gram per milliliters. So very, very, uh, with, with, uh, with according to this uh, density, density, we can distinguish them according to this, this uh, number C. You can see at the second column. The second me mechanism, the second criterion to distinguish them uh, is the diameter, <laughs> is size, size. So, uh, chemicals are a very big structure. Uh, in some cases, we can see them using microscopy. Uh, the, the, third, the third method of um, distinguish them is uh, electrophoresis. Uh, according uh, the principle of uh, working with electrophoresis is to uh, distinguish different proteins or different, different lipoproteins according to their, their charge and size at the same time. So, uh, Kyle Omicron stay on the start, but when we give charge, plus and minus, uh, Kyle can't uh, move because they very big structures. Well, uh, uh, high density lipoproteins uh, move very fast. Um, low density lipoproteins follow their high density lipoproteins, and very low density lipoproteins follow of uh, low density lipoproteins. Uh, the next um, criterion of distinguish them is a site of formation and function. So because uh, they carry different types of lipids, uh, the, the precise site of production of the, these structures are different. Chemicals produced by small intestine. And the main function of these this, uh, structures is a transport of exogenous triacylglycerols from small testing to peripheral organs. That means that um, chymocrons transport um, lipids from food to our organs, to liver, to muscle, to lacking uh, breast gland, 
to, uh, to adipose tissue. Um, the second type of uh, lipoproteins are very low density lipoproteins. The main function of these structures is uh, transport of antigenous triglycerides. That means that uh, they produce by liver from glucose or excess of mm, fatty acids and transport of the endogenous, that means that produced by our cells, um, and genus uh, lipids to different organs. Low density lipoproteins produced from very low density lipoproteins and transport cholesterol, and high density lipoproteins <coughs> transport, um, transport cholesterol esters from peripheral tissues to, to liver. Um, according to the composition of li lipoproteins, we can divide them um, according to the concentration of protein, free cholesterol, cholesterol esters, triglycerols, and phospholipids. So uh, these distinguish are based on the function, the main function of these lipoproteins. So very low dense lipoproteins and chylon cross transport triglycerols. So this is a form of transport of these types of lipids. Low dense lipoproteins transport cholesterol esters, and high dense lipoproteins transport cholesterol esters from peripheral tissue uh, to liver. So this is the main um, main idea. All right. How do lipoproteins? Can you see or not? No? Not good. No. Uh, Okay, I will describe. Okay, how to understand this uh, transport, mechanism of transport. So small testing, small te testing uh, uh, produce, produces kind of crops, which uh, transport food lipids from food, from food, from intestine, to peripheral tissues like muscle, uh, muscles and um, adipose tissue. So the main idea is to transport exogenous lipids. Uh, so these, uh, these organs, muscles and the deposed tissue, can choose, can find chylomicrons and degradate them. And they get, can get from the, the structures triglycerols uh, in form of free fatty acids. So they use energy, exogenous energy. The remnants of chylomicrons transported to liver and there, they convert it to very low dense lipoproteins. So the pathway is uh, sounds like this, looks like this: small testing, blood, peripheral organs, blood, liver, and the liver, uh, all lipids which are transported, uh, uh, captured from food, uh, converted to very low into very low dense lipoproteins. So the same, the same pathway have very low density peptides. They secreted by liver cells into blood. After that, they transported to peripheral organ, organs again. Peripheral organs can get triglycerols uh, from this structure, from very low density peptides, and they can use uh, use them to pr to produce energy or uh, make a deposition. Uh, in, for, in case of adipose tissue. Uh, the remnants of uh, very low dense lipo lipoproteins, we call low dense lipoproteins. So the main function of these structures is uh, transport of cholesterol. So the main idea is uh, sounds like this. Uh, very low dense lipoproteins transport at the same time triglycerols and cholesterols, cholesterol. And peripheral organs can choose what they prefer to get from this structure, triglycerols or cholesterol. So if they need triglycerols or fatty acids, they degradate very low dose lipoproteins as a, as a result of the production of remnants, which we call uh, low dose lipoproteins. The next, uh, the next type of lipoproteins is a high dose lipoproteins. The main function of high dose lipoproteins is a uh, is a reverse transport of cholesterol steps. That means that the structure produced by liver and they secrete it into bloodstream. After that, they transport it into peripheral organs and get from, peri from peripheral organs cholesterol steps. So they 
again transport the cholesterol esters into uh, liver. This is the main function of high dense lipoproteins. This is the main route of transport lipids in our blood. Um, one of the mm, disturbances in lipid metabolism is the um, formation of atherosclerotic plaque. Well, here you can see um, the main points of evolution of this plaque. So why this, uh, this situation is very bad? Because uh, uh, you can see at the left, left picture that uh, if this atherosclerotic plaque become more and more, uh, bigger and bigger, and uh, the result is a uh, construction of, of uh, blood vessel soils. And the result is depletion of transport of oxygen and chemicals to uh, peripheral organs. So um, at the end of the formation of this plant is a blocking of transport Transport blood, uh, transport blood into, blood into peripheral organs, and uh, the result is a, um, is a dye of cells which are supplied by this vessel. So there are several stages of the of development of this plant. So at first, um, in case of excess of cholesterol in our bloodstream, in low dense lipoproteins they could be oxidized by oxygen from red blood cells because concentration of oxygen in our blood is very high. And as a result, this activation of macrophages of the cells can di should digest the excess of oxidized low-dense lipoproteins. So, but in case of excess of cholesterol in blood, uh, macrophages can't digest these structures, and they have to digest them so, uh, somewhere outside from vessel. They uh, they try to 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 transport it into peripheral organs, but they can't, and they are stored on their endothelial cells. Here on the left part of the lesson out of the picture, you can see the formation of plaque. So in the, inside this plaque, we can find damaged macrophages which, uh, which were tried to digest oxidized lipoprotein, low-dense lipoproteins. So after that, um, after this initial process, um, is there maybe formation of damage of this plaque, damage of endothelial cells, and formation of helid uh, fissure. Here on the top of the of the of the, of the picture, so the result is interaction with uh, blood proteins, which are like fibrinogen to form fibrin, and um, the result is formation of thrombus. Here on this uh, the middle of the, le of the left part of the picture, and the middle and the and, and both on the bottom. So the result is formation of thrombus which uh, works like a plug, plug, and uh, the result is a blocking of transport uh, blood, and uh, including red blood cells and chemicals which supply, which should be supplied uh, to peripheral, peripheral organs to support their life. All right, and the result is a, is a damage of peripheral organs, like heart. Uh, one of the most important uh, pathology is a myocardial infarction. And now I will tell you about what is it um, and the clinical biochemistry of um, myocardial infarction and markers which we use to determine patients with myocardial infarction. Um, so uh, to prevent development of the previous, previous stages of, of uh, damage or formation of atherosclerotic sclerotic, uh, plaque, uh, we know several uh, risk factors which are listed here. So we can divide them on corrected, so we, which, which we can change, or uncorrected, which we can't change. So corrected are cigarette smoking. So you can prevent development of, um, of um, patients can, can prevent development of atherosclerotic black uh, vitamin smoking. The next, the next factor is a hypertension. So we can 
regulate uh, pressure, blood pressure using specific drugs. Obesity, we can regulate um, by weight. Uh, diabetes mellitus, we can regulate concentration of glucose in blood. A sedentary lifestyle, uh, we can change it, uh, activating physical activity. Uncorrected, uh, family history, that means that some, some diseases are genetic disease, and we can't change our genetic, our genetic genetics. And so, in this case, uh, we can only supervise on these patients. Age, uh, we can change our age, so this uh, factor is um, uncorrected factors to development of uh, heart, uh, coronary heart disease. Uh, so there are several several markers of development of myocardial infarction. So the first markers are transaminases. Um, approximately 70 years ago, um, scientists found that the, the, that uh, activity of transaminases in peripheral blood correlated with the size of myocardial infarction. So in um, in more damaged hearts, um, in patients with more damaged hearts, with more than damaged heart, uh, they swore that activity of transaminases were very high. So the main idea of the formulated um, 70 years ago, endocellular enzymes, activity of which we can detect in the peripheral blood, leave the damaged cells. So if you know specific protein which, can, which we can find only in one organ, specific organ, and if we find this protein outside in blood, we can conclude that this organ is damaged. So this is the main idea. If this organ damaged, components of, this cell, of cells which build this organ, um, we can find in, blood, in peripheral blood. So um, the first problem, the main, the main problems of using transaminases to determine patients with myocardial infarction is um, we don't know is this uh, damage reversible or irreversible. So we have to know this because we can, uh, now, uh, depends on it, um, the treatment, specific treatment depends on it on, on, this, on this fact. And the second problem using transaminases is um, the fact that transaminase is expressed not only in heart, but also in liver and in muscles. So we can the source of these transaminases, all these, in, these enzymes. And uh, uh, this is a problem that maybe takes place in the case of simultaneously uh, development of disease of liver and heart at the same time, or muscle and heart, and we can distinguish and transaminases, a source, main source of transaminases. The second, the second uh, marker is uh, lactate dehydrogenase. We know several types of this enzyme. The, the main function of this enzyme is a, catal uh, is a catal catalyzing of reaction, conversion of lactate to pyruvate, and this reaction is reversible. Uh, we know several types of lactate dehydrogenases. So, uh, because uh, they contain four subunits by two types, of two types, and so different combinations of um, the subunits uh, to build this, uh, the whole structure of enzyme, gives us five types of enzymes, five IZ enzymes. So, uh, we can divide them according to the concentration of activity of these enzymes in different organs, in the heart, skeletal muscles, and liver. Uh, the first type, the first and second type, lactate dehydrogenase 1 and 2, uh, more expressed in, in the heart. So we can distinguish, so the main idea, again, if we know that the main source of lactate dehydrogenase in the blood is heart, so we, if we find high, con high activity of this enzyme, we can conclude that heart is damaged. Um, uh, the lactate dehydrogenase type 5 on the last column more expressed is expressed in skeletal muscle and liver so again we can we can check we can estimate activity of this enzyme in blood 
and uh, um, we can conclude that skeletal muscles or liver were damaged in this fashion. The next, the next uh, enzyme which we can use to return patients with uh, myocardial infarction is a creatine K kinase. Uh, this is a protein, this is an enzyme which converts creatine, creatine into creatine phosphate and uses phosphate group from ATP to produce ADP. This reaction also uh, reversible. And uh, the main function of this, of this enzyme is the accumulation of an energy-rich phosphate group in cell, inside cell. So, um, uh, in case of depletion of concentration of ATP in, in the cell, uh, in case of activation of um, activity of, of neuronal cells or blood or heart cells or muscle cells, they can produce free ATP to do any work of the of the cells. We know um, that uh, creatine kinase contains two subunits of two types. The first type is an M type, uh, uh, the first uh, subunit, M subunit. First type, type of subunits is an M subunit from M from muscle. And B subunit, B type subunit is a from, from brain. And combination of uh, subunits, two, two types of these subunits used to produce uh, three types of creatine kinase. These are BB type found in brain. MB type is specific for heart, and the MM type is specific for skeletal muscles. So if we know that MB type of creatine kinase produced uh, by, uh, by heart, we can conclude that in case of high concentration, uh, high activity of this creatine kinase in bloodstream, we can conclude that that, uh, that uh, heart in, in this patient is damaged. So this is the main idea. Um, uh, we have several limitations of using these enzymes, I already um, told you. Uh, the, first, the first problem is the complexity and duration of determination. So this problem takes place in case of um, estimation of activity of uh, lactide dehydrogenase. So the electrophoresis, which we use to determine activity of these uh, enzymes, is very um, complex, uh, uh, complex uh, method. The second problem is a low diagnostic sensitivity and specificity of ice enzymes. So, uh, uh, in, when, when we uh, say that MB type creatine kinase found in the heart, MM type uh, creatine kinase found in, in the muscles, and BB type of creatine kinase found in, in, in brain, that is not true truth, because uh, the main difference between, mm, between mm, all these organs is the concentration of these types of subunits, so of these types of uh, ice enzymes. So uh, muscles express at the same time MB, MB type of creatine kinase and MM creatine kinase, and a small amount of BB type of creatine kinase. So uh, the main difference between organs is a uh, difference of concentration. So, um, uh, approximately, muscles um, MB, MB type of creatine kinase, um, approximately at 5%, but in heart, 25%. So, the main difference between organs, these organs, is a concentration, only concentration. So, this is a problem to using these uh, enzymes to determine patients with a myocardial infection. Uh, the next, the last, the most important, the most modern, modern uh, marker of heart damage of heart, a myocardial infarction, is a troponin. Troponin is a regulatory protein which contains three subunits. Subunits T, which can interact with the tro tropomycin. Uh, uh, troponin I, uh, which regulate activity. I means inhibitory that regulate activity of movement of uh, contraction of heart and muscles. And calcium binding subunit, troponin C. And um, two of them, first two of them, troponin I and troponin T, have uh, known with a specific heart form 
which we can use to return patients with myocardial infarction. Calcium binding, binding troponin C um, is, um, no, or is not specific. Uh, troponin, because we can find the same protein with, with say, the same antigen form um, in different muscles, like skeletal muscles. So, um, diagnostic kits, diagnostic kits uh, uses troponin T and troponin I only to determine patients with myocardial infarction. Uh, there are two fractions of heart specific troponin. Why do we have to know this? Because uh, mm, there are two fact, uh, there are two fractions, a free fraction, cytoplasmic fraction, and tropomycin associated fraction. Um, and um, in this case, we have to know this because in the in case of myocardial infarction, concentration of troponin, 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 troponin is uh, contains two peaks. The first peak. Is a is a I will I will show you the first peak. Look at there, a green green line, green line. Troponin I, troponin T. The first peak, peak C. See? Can you see? Uh, is there a cytoplasmic cytoplasmic fraction? And the first hours of myocardial infarction, concentration of troponin I and troponin T become high. And the second peak here. Uh, is related of entering of um, tropomycin uh, associated troponin I and troponin T, and we we have known this dynamics. All right, next limitations of troponin T. How do specific troponin T? As uh, the first, the first analyte heterogeneity. So, because, because uh, troponin has a uh, tendency to form a mock, uh, to, to form complexes, um, and um, diagnostic kits, diagnostic kits uh, sometimes can't determine the appropriate concentration of troponins. The second limitation is the presence of oxidized or phosphorylated or degraded forms of troponin. That means that in case of damage of heart, uh, the process. Yeah, it's very hot. Uh, 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 and um, in case of damage of myocardial infarction, uh, all proteins uh, may be changed. And uh, as a result, uh, diagnostic kits can find appropriate, uh, can determine, can determine appropriate concentration of, of troponin. And uh, next, next uh, uh, limitation is inter interference with antibodies. We maybe uh, some of, uh, with some of you already found uh, clinical cases which related with high concentration of fibrinogen, fibrinogen. and uh, in this case, uh, high concentration of fibrinogen uh, change elevate concentration um, concentration of troponin I troponin T. Uh, the next problem, the last problem, is the problem of determining of the reference limits for commercial sense kits of different manufacturers. So we sometimes we can't compare results which we took in one hospital to another hospital. And we have to, uh, to talk with the um, laboratory personals, personal and um, to, to discuss um, a reference, uh, reference um, uh, ranges for this marker. So this is a schematic depiction of the kinetics of several cardiac markers here. In most cases, at first, first, uh, first hours of after myocardial infarction, concentration of, uh, my, uh, my, uh, of uh, marker become higher, and after that, and become lower. Lower. It depends on only on size of this uh, protein and the rate of elimination from blood. Uh, if if a molecule is very small, uh, this uh, and um, and uh, works in, inside the cytoplasmic space, uh, these uh, marker or these proteins can enter into the bloodstream very fast, and, high, and concentration of this marker become higher. If molecule uh, is uh, bigger, 
uh, their rate of entering uh, in all this marker or this protein into the blood become become lower, and uh, the result is uh, accumulation of of this marker in blood become later. Stop, stop talking. Okay, here you can see uh, uh, devices which we use to determine concentration of different different components of uh, different different marker of myocardial infarction. So this is test system which can give us information. If, if uh, answer to to the question, if this patient suffer from myocardial infarction or not. Here you can see one line or two line. See? Uh, two line, two line, two lines means what's up? Are you hungry? Yeah? <laughs> Let's imagine that here is here see the patient with the myocardial infarction. What what have you do right now? Can you tell me? How how can you use this test system? What do you want to do? Okay? Let's imagine this situation. What is the your first step? Uh, you suppose this patient suffer from myocardial infarction. What do you have to do at first? Here, here. Here. Hmm? How? How? I give you this these devices. What do you do? do? What do you have to do? Please show me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look. You put you put a drop a drop of blood here. Here, arrow, red arrow, here, yeah. you have to put a, a drop of blood here. After that, you get results. If you see two lines, that means that this patient has myocardial infarction. What does it mean one line? One line means... No. No. That means that this test is working. See, if you can't see one line, you have to change uh, uh, this device. See, this is the main idea. So this is a very simple test. You, uh, you, any one of you can do this. It's very simple. Uh, using five minutes, I can I can show you how how, how is uh, this uh, this system works. So the uh, second idea, the second second device, second device can. Uh, can give give us uh, appropriate concentration of troponin or creatine activity of creatine kinase. kinase. So uh, we use appropriate appropriate concentration. So here we can see we can we can give answer if, uh, yes or no. The patient has macular infarction or not macular infarction. In this case, we can um, we can estimate appropriate concentration. Of um, these markers, this myocardial, uh, this uh, um, markers of myocardial infarction. So, how to determine patients with uh, uh, with myocardial infarction? All right. So, uh, this is uh, an algorithm. Algorithm. So, uh, if you see here a patient with uh, with a myocardial infarction, you suppose this patient suffer from myocardial infarction. Uh, you have to, at first, you have to ask him what are his complaints. So if he has a chest pain, um, a shortness of breath, dizziness, loss of con uh, con consciousness, so you can suppose uh, what happened with this patient. After that, you have to ask him or his relatives or his families or his friends, which are maybe near from him, uh, with him. So we have to, to ask him uh, what happened. What happened? And the patient uh, maybe give you some specific information. After that, you have to, to make a 12 lead electrocardiograph because you have to determine 
uh, in this fashion using this electrocardiography, using this method. If you find ST segment elevation, the result is very, uh, the diagnosis is very simple. So this patient has myocardial infarction. So if you can't find any change in ECG, you have to make, you have to order him um, by chemical tests. If you find um, elevation of um, concentration of uh, biochemical markers you, and uh, no change in ECG, you may conclude that this patient suffered from myocardial infarction without ST elevation. There are a third situation. If concentration of, if, uh, if you can't find any, any problems with uh, um, any, any changes in ECG, or any elevation of any heart or any uh, heart damage marker, marker, markers of heart damage. So you may conclude that these patients may suffer from uh, uh, coronary heart disease, but you have to give him after that, after several um, several days or hours, give a physical activity and check uh, uh, check changing of ECG if they. Have checked the the special suffer from coronary heart disease. If uh, you can't, if you will not find any any changes in ECG, this patient is healthy and uh, something wrong with this. This patient is not related with uh, uh, heart disease of heart. Um, current recommendation of using bi biochemical tests. The primary laboratory marker of acute myocardial infarction is cardiac specific troponin. Troponin I and troponin T. Transaminases, lactate dehydrogenases, or is uh, isenzymes are no longer recommend, recommended as cardiac markers. But in some hospital uh, worldwide uses this test um, because they um, have no money to, to buy a specific cardiac specific test. They maybe use this test but the result is very bad. Uh, creatine kinase and B form and B type testing has um, precise in some de de uh, degree in the troponin era, but because uh, there are few and the situation with it clearly provides additional information. So when you know that this patient has myocardial infarction, after that you can supervise him uh, using other types of uh, markers. Uh, not, sir, uh, not only troponin, because troponin is very costly, costly kit. <coughs> uh, the next part is the markers of coronary risk and high heart failure. The first, uh, C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is a small protein that uh, can mm, interact with phospholipids and activates classical complement pathway, which um, damage bacterial cells. Concentration of uh, C-reactive proteins uh, is increasing in, is increasing in case of increasing in case of inflammation, any type of inflammation, bacterial or uh, sometimes non-bacterial. And um, we can use uh, this uh, C-reactive this test, the chemical test, as a marker of coronary risk, uh, with uh, uh, um, with a result uh, which compared with a concentration of low dense lipoproteins and total cholesterol. So we can use this this test uh, test um, only when we exclude different types of uh, infections. So there are several types of steps of using this recommendations of using this um, um, high specific react, uh, C-reactive proteins. And the main idea: uh, look at the the third third point. So we have to, at first, we have to exclude an infection. And according to the concentration of C-reactive protein, less than one milligram per liter, uh, and this is low risk, from one to three milligrams per liter is a, uh, is an intermediate uh, risk of cardiovascular disease. And, well, yeah. And more than three milligram per liter uh, is a high. High risk of cardiovascular disease. All right, next, next test, sometimes used to return damage of 
and the terrible cells. Is the concentration uh, is the concentration of homocysteine. This one, the structure of homocysteine on the bottom. And the um, main idea is that, that this, this um, chemical is uh, toxic for endothelial cells. And um, uh, several years ago, this uh, test used to determine, determine um, damage of endothelial cells. But now uh, it's already known that uh, concentration of homocysteine become high in case of deficit of vitamins and defects of specific enzymes, which are related with metabolism of methane. Um, the next test uh, is a natriuretic peptides. Natriuretic peptides. These are arterial form, B type, C type, D type, and urodilatin. So the main idea. The main idea of um, working these hormones, they, these peptides are hormones. They produced by heart in case of increasing of the whole blood volume. And uh, in case of stretching of heart, uh, heart concentration of, um, of these uh, peptides become high. And um, we can conclude, we can use these peptides to determine if this patient suffered from failed, uh, heart failure or not. If uh, this patient um, suffered from heart failure, concentration of, different, on, of all these types of natriuretic peptides become, become high. But in case of laboratory diagnostics, in case of uh, using, practical using of this, of this, of this peptides, um, scientists concluded that the much better using not, not the, uh, the whole structure of peptide, for example, B and P, but using an NT probin. P is a, is a N terminal, pro means previous form of BNP, so, uh, uh, which produced by heart here. So the structure of, of uh, this, this peptide. The main difference between two, two of these uh, tests is a lifetime which they circulate in blood. So uh, because uh, lifetime, lifespan, uh, lifetime, uh, half lifetime BNP is 22 minutes in blood, uh, that means that uh, concentration of this peptide become high and low in a short time. So in case of anti-pro BNP, uh, half lifetime uh, takes. Uh, approximately one to, uh, one, from one to two hours. And concentration of this peptide become changed um, not too fast as a BNP. And <coughs> we can use this test, which are related with atrial sp sprints in our practical lessons. We will discuss several cases which related with high concentration of of BNP and NT pro BNP, which we can use determined to patients with uh, some problems of uh, heart. Okay, so 